in my 31 years of ministry, <coughs> this is by far the best date on which Easter has ever fallen. <laughs> April Fool's Day is a perfect secular holiday to talk about the Christian faith. Because to so many, Christianity seems absolutely foolish. And if you look at our history of faith, it is foolish in some ways. And there is a lot of humor in our faith. We sometimes can imagine Jesus having people just on the edge and then say, Psych! Gotcha. <laughs> he told parables, he taught the disciples, and he answered questions posed by authorities with humor, with grace, and with a surprise. One can imagine when quizzed about if the Jews should pay taxes to Caesar, how perturbed the person was when Jim, Jesus simply said, Render to Caesar what Caesar, and to God what's God's. Or when asked, who's my neighbor? Jesus told the totally ridiculous parable of the Good Samaritan that deflated the entire crowd. The biggest divine joke of all happened to the Romans and the Pharisees when they thought they had gotten rid of Jesus once and for all. Even padding their campaign with misdirection by telling the guards to say that Jesus' posse had stolen his body. The joke was on all of them. When Jesus was raised from the dead and not only continued preaching but also eating with people and preaching the good news out in the open where all can see him. Christians are often questioned about the veracity or even the existence of Jesus much less that he was the Son of God, and he rose from the dead. And while we attempt to defend our faith at times, in the end, our best argument is, this is our faith. This is our faith. And faith means the assurance of things hoped for and the conviction of things not seen. In other words, in order to have faith, you first got to have faith. We believe because we have experienced the living Christ in our lives. Daddy, look. What others say is <coughs> foolishness, irrationality, silliness, and folly is what we know to be true. The love of God, the teachings of Jesus, and the constant presence of the Holy Spirit has made a difference in our lives. For millennia, human beings have struggled with taking control of their lives. Our own wisdom has not gotten us very far. In fact, human wisdom usually leads to disaster because human wisdom is tainted with a need for superiority and indulgence. The Bible, as well as our secular history books, are full of stories of human wisdom that is absolutely foolish. Each and every time our ancestors in faith got into trouble, it was because they stopped letting God guide them and they rejected their faith 
trying to wrestle control of their lives from God. Most of our social ills today are rooted in the fact that we don't follow the Lord and what the Lord has told us to do. <laughs> That's okay. Go to Papa. Okay. <laughs> Let me say that again. Most of our social ills today are rooted in the fact that we don't follow the Lord who told us what to do. Racial hatred stems from wanting others to be less than and supported by twisting God's word in our words and in our actions and in our hearts. Prejudice toward the LGBTQ community is another example of trying to reject people, and it totally goes against God's all-inclusive word. Poverty, gun violence, wars, extremism, bullying, gossip, genocide, and domestic abuse are just a few examples of human foolishness that have horrible consequences in our society. And each of these things is rooted in our own foolishness when we reject the command of love. To love God completely and to love our neighbors as ourselves. The Apostle Paul spoke of this critically in the letter to the church in Corinth. Our problems are our own making, not God's. He wrote, this is because the foolishness of God is wiser than human wisdom, and the weakness of God is stronger than human strength. The only way that I see we can get out of the disorder in our lives and in our world is to return to the Lord. To be filled with godliness and to give our human foolishness up for God's wisdom and strength. It's more than just being nice. It also means letting God have his full. Giving ourselves to God is hard work because it requires self-examination and action. It means surrender of all the vain things that charm us and it starts with us, each one of us. And to many around the world, this seems like foolishness. It seems absolutely absurd. They will wait for the punchline. They will wait to hear us say, April Fools! But Paul says, the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are being destroyed. But it is the power of God to those of us who are being saved. For those who have faith, Easter Sunday is new to us every year. Not because the story has changed, but precisely because the story has not changed. The tomb was empty, not because Jesus' disciples came in the night and stole his bodies while the guards were sleeping. The tomb was not empty because Jesus became just a spirit. The tomb was empty because Jesus Christ rose from the dead and conquered our need to sin and our fear of death. Such foolishness, cries the world. Oh, that all people would 
would be so foolish as to put their faith in God, the Savior of humankind.